Okay, this is Nick Dutch back again uh, for another delightful video and so on and so forth. Now, just going to go through a few of the key periods in time uh, in which there's been historical occurrences as far as automatic writing and, of course, the talking board, also known as the Ouija board, is concerned. In the year of, or approximately the year of 1100 AD or CE, depending upon which system you use, okay, there was use of both the uh, both talking boards and automatic writing in ancient China, in old China. Often under carefully controlled ritual environments, this was a technique which I think was called Fiji in Chinese, which essentially means trying to use these devices to attempt to communicate with spiritual entities of sorts or believe spiritual entities and there was also a more agnostic movement which says no it's not spirits but it's interesting anyway that's the way i understand it some chinese dynasties encouraged it some chinese dynasties wanted to cut down on it so even like a thousand years ago there was still an awful lot of controversy surrounding the subjects of using these devices for automatic writing and so on and so forth then, of course, we move forward to the more modern era, the year of 1890, May 28th, when Bond and Kennard applied for the first patent for a talking board and claimed that the word Ouija was an ancient Egyptian word for good luck. The patent was granted on February the 10th, 1891. Then, moving even further forward, William Flood took over the production of the now patented Ouija board and changed the meaning of the word Ouija and said that it was the French and German words for yes. But remember, that interpretation was applied retrospectively okay, to the word itself. So it's, there's, an, there's the or symptoms of the creation of a new folk myth associated with the word itself. 1927, Flood dies after a life of legal action against the competitors, namely anyone who used the very popular name Ouija for their form of talking board. And in 1966, Parker Brothers took over making the board. And 1991, the patent has been sold to Hasbro. Uh, and there are t 10 legal boards in, in circulation being created which bear the name Ouija. But the more important thing is the history of the ideomotor effect, which is, of course, associated with the Ouija board phenomena, which is a perfectly natural phenomena. 1852, William Benjamin Carpenter uh, created the term the Carpenter effect, which refers to muscular movement, which can be independent of conscious or conscious desires and emotions of the operator using the, the, the device or board. Now that goes with pendulum dowsing, that goes with dowsing rods, and of course that goes with using the Ouija board. Further testing was done by great people such as Michael Faraday, uh, presumably the, the same Michael Faraday as of the Faraday cage, uh, Michael Chevril, William James, and Ray Hyman, the famous skeptic, who, who did a series of tests which proved that many spiritual forces are attributable to the ideomotor effects. In 1977, Ray Hyman uh, made a statement that suggestion uh, on a lot of different levels, including deep subconscious suggestion, can guide the behavior of people given by subtle cues. And so that is therefore applied to spiritual and um, ideomotor experiences as well. So, from the positivistic scientific point of view, there is no real um, evidence of, or hard and fast conclusive, I should say, evidence of spiritual forces at work. Obviously, that's positivistic evidence, that's not anti-positivistic evidence, there's different types of experiences and forms of research out there than just the natural sciences. So, what we can say from, you know, from science science itself, proper science, all right, normal, ordinary, everyday science, is that this is the, you know, there is a phenomena which the scientists agree on, which does work, okay, according to the scientists, right, which each and every single person out there can actually explore. There was a movement in the 1960s to try and use talking board devices for the purposes of psychological exploration, and so essentially these things can be used for different things, but still using the same media motor effects. So... I mean, let, let me put it to you like this. Let's say someone came to you and made a claim that their garden gnome um, glowed brilliant red. 
at eight o'clock at night on Halloween every single year. All right. And they said it was due to the ghost of the headless horseman or something. Well, if it turned out with the passage of time that that glowing red thing did happen, but it happened because of atmospheric effects and electromagnetism and uh, subterranean ground tremors and underground water and sunspots and all the rest of that stuff, but it still happens, I'd still want to see it because it would be totally cool. Okay? So for anyone out there who's like atheistic or agnostic about the use of the Ouija board, use it. All right, because it's your people, all right, your people who say that it works, namely that a experience, namely the idiomotor effects, does actually happen. That's their interpretation, not mine, not those of spiritualists or spiritual people or Wiccans or witches, but those of people like Ray Hyman, Michael Faraday, William Benjamin Carpenter. All right, so that will hopefully put another interpretation on what these things are about and why they're so cool. So I want all of you people out there, all of you agnostics and atheists and skeptics, to start making yourself little talking boards and playing with them on Halloween night. Okay, that's your homework. Hmm? And maybe, just maybe, something will happen which even people like Benjamin Carpenter, Michael Faraday, William James, and Ray Hyman wouldn't be able to understand. But on the other hand, maybe it won't. But on the other hand, it would still be cool to find out from your own personal experience, wouldn't it? <laughs>